we're just so busy. Mm -hmm. And our church is so busy. And we have this meeting and that meeting and, and that gathering and this gathering. And we keep our Christians so busy, they don't have time to join a club, to join a, a service club in their town, or, or to, to uh, mm -hmm. go down to the mission and help feed the hungry or whatever. And, and uh, our pastor, who happens to be my son, has decided we're not going to do our own food pantry. No, we're, you know, someone will say, well, we should have, we should have a food pantry. No, no, there's, there's plenty of organizations in town mm -hmm. that have food pantries. We want you to be freed up so you can go down there and volunteer there and get to know other people. Mm -hmm. mm, that's and mix true. up with other people. How about clothing? No, we've got a clothes closet in town. Yeah, but that's not our church. It doesn't matter. You're going to go down there, you're going to volunteer, and you're going to get to meet other people besides just our church people. Mm -hmm. That's how we're going to get involved around town. You know? And so I think that's that's cool. I go, man, right on. That's my boy. <laughs> I like it. And so he commands us to make disciples. Now, what is a disciple? I, I looked up all kinds of definitions on disciple. The best one I ever found, I read all books on discipleship and so on, and they always say a disciple is a follower. So a disciple is a follower, a disciple is a follower. And then I looked up the 10th Collegiate uh, Dictionary, the 10th edition of the Collegiate Dictionary, uh, Webster's Collegiate Dictionary. And the 10th edition, other editions dropped it. But at least the 10th edition said this, <laughs> a disciple is one who follows and helps spread the teachings of his, of uh, the one he follows. <laughs> right? Yeah, so you follows. follow someone and you help. And spread. Yeah. A disciple is one who follows another and assists in spreading the teachings of the one he follows. Mm -hmm. So, I've used all kinds of discipleship material, and much of it is just. Growth, 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 individual growth, personal growth, personal growth. And then finally, maybe book six, you get down to witnessing. And they give you maybe the bridge illustration. Mm -hmm. But they give you no on-the-job training. They don't really teach you how to pray with someone. They don't teach you how to get into the into the gospel. They don't, they don't really equip you. They just say, go do it, right? And uh, look, disciple-making involves witnessing. If you're not witnessing, you're not a true disciple. Jesus said, follow me, and I'll make you happy, right? No. So, you know, just, just study the Bible and so on so you can be happier. You can have a better life. No, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. You know? And so that's what a true disciple is, someone who reproduces. So don't judge the effectiveness of your uh, evangelism and discipling only by what you see in the person that you evangelize. Measure your effectiveness by your spiritual grandchildren. Reproducing a disciple is a vital, functional, maturing reproducing follower of Jesus Christ, a reproducer. Think of it this way. God created everything with life in order to reproduce. Right? Mm -hmm. He created the trees of the field and they reproduce after their own kind. He created the birds of the air and they multiply after their own kind. The fish of the sea, they multiply after their own kind. He created the, the, uh, the crawling creatures on the earth, and they the multiply earth. after their own kind. All the plants, they multiply after their own kind. And then he created man and woman. He says, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. And then God created Christians. Hmm. Right? Yeah. We're supposed to reproduce. Amen. We're, supposed to, we're supposed to multiply. And if a husband and a wife can't multiply, they know there's something wrong, right? They'll go to doctors, they'll spend money, they will, they will, you know, go through the medical process and everything, trying to find out what's wrong, why? Because they want to multiply. And if they can't, what they do? They'll adopt, right? Because it's in us. We're created with that desire. And, uh, and Christians ought to be multiplying as well. If we're not multiplying, I wonder if we're really a disciple. I wonder if we're really following Christ if we're not multiplying. We're certainly not following him in the way that he's, he commanded us to follow him. Right? Mm -hmm. Responsibility for discipling is twofold. 
The individual witness and the team who led the new believer to Christ are the ones that are to follow that person up and make sure mm -hmm. that they're discipled. Does it mean you have to disciple everyone you lead to Christ? Mm -hmm. No, you probably can't do that. Especially if God gives you great fruit, right? You can't do that by yourself, but you can you can enlist others to do so. Mm -hmm. uh, when I first became uh, a pastor, I was an associate pastor of evangelism and disciple making in our local church. The pastor that hired me is the one who trained me in evangelism, and he had taken a church that was 120, and um, and I just started sharing. I just started using EE, and training people who would train others who would train others. And uh, the first year, we doubled from 120 to 240. The next year, we doubled again. The next year, we doubled again. And the next year, we practically doubled again. Mm -hmm. And all we were doing was we were sharing our faith, training others to share their faith, and they were training others to share their faith. It was incredible. The growth was just fantastic. And then we realized, man, we have to disciple these people. How are we going to do that? Well, those who were no longer in EE, we trained them to be disciples, one-on-one -on -one discipling. We mm -hmm. gave them a little little flyers, or 13 flyers, 13 studies, mm -hmm. seven in the Gospel of John, seven that branched out to the rest of the Bible. And uh, you to meet once a week with your disciple, and sit down and go through this, do it over coffee or whatever, pray together, you know, develop a prayer list, uh, make sure they're coming to church, make sure they get baptized, uh, that mm -hmm. sort of thing, you know. And we had, we had uh, 150 pairs one-on-one, -on -one, 150 one-on-one -on -one pairs of people discipling others. And when they went through the 13 weeks, we'd bring them on the platform, they'd graduate, we gave them a little pin, you know, just like you do with the EE, gave them a little pin, and said, now you're ready to disciple someone else. Amen. You've been through it, and you can take someone else through it, you know? It was called Discipleship 100. Mm -hmm. And then when they're through that, guess what we did? We developed Discipleship That's 150. <laughs> and it was great! You gotta do something. Provide mm -hmm. a class. Somehow, make sure that these people get disciples. That's our responsibility. That's true. The local church family has that responsibility as well. Parents present at the birth have a primary responsibility, but if you can't do it, then you put them up for adoption, right? Make sure that someone adopts them and follows them up. Never leave a new convert as an orphan. Amen. Prerequisites for effective discipling. Number one is effective evangelism. You've got to be sure that a person really knows the gospel. If they're going to be disciples properly, if they're going to grow, right? So many churches, there are many large churches that say, oh, we don't need evangelism. We have a lot of people coming to Christ uh, in our services. We have people coming to Christ all the time. I say, Pastor, you're missing the point. Yeah. You're missing the point. You're not allowing your people, you're not training your people to be able to share for, with their friends and neighbors, for one thing. The other thing is they come forward and they receive Christ because they really understand what they've done. Mm -hmm. Who meets with them after they pray to receive the Lord? Train those people in EE. Give them the gospel so they can make sure they sit one-on-one -on -one with the person who comes forward to receive Christ during the service. They sit one-on-one -on -one with them. They go through the gospel. Make sure they ask the two diagnostic questions. Make sure they understand the gospel. That's the first step in discipling someone is make sure they have the assurance for their salvation. Mm -hmm. And the only way for them to have assurance is that they understand the gospel, right? I don't think there's a better thing for, you know, if you go, I don't have any materials to disciple a new believer. Yes, you do. It's right there on your hand. Mm -hmm. Your first week, just share with them the assurance of salvation. All right, go through the gospel of John, the assurance version. Next week, get together and talk about grace. Next week, talk about man. And have them memorize the points as you go through each week by week. And faith, right? And you've got six weeks there of discipling. And they know the gospel. And start praying with them for the friends and the relatives and the work associates they have that don't know Christ. And go mm -hmm. with them. Share with share the gospel with their friends. And their, that's great disciple making. Uh, effective evangelism. Heart. We have to have the right heart. We need to, to love these people, right? Effective evangelism, effective uh, discipling involves heart. Like just like in parenting, rearing spiritual children becomes mature people. People become mature disciples. It requires a special God-like love. Love them with the love of Christ, as we talked about this morning. God loved people through me, and I think the best discipling is basically involving people in your own life. You go to a Bible study, bring your disciple with you. You go to church on Sunday, 
Sit with your disciple. Are you going on a picnic? Invite your disciple. Are you going, are you going uh, fishing next Saturday? Invite your disciple. Are you going to play golf? Invite your disciple. Just to hang out together. Friendship is the best discipling you can do. Mm -hmm. So you can see what a Christian life is like, right? And then perspective. Ask God to give you an eternal, heavenly perspective on life. What are your priorities? What are your personal priorities? What are your, the, your priorities in your church life? And uh, having eternity in view will be more willing to let God's grace mold our lives and make us into the models for discipling others. And then work. It takes hard work. It's not easy to disciple people. But we have to be committed to that. Um, I always, my, the man who trained me in evangelism was, uh, was my associate, he was an associate pastor at the church I attended, and he discipled me and about six, seven others. And he had a young married Sunday school class. And that young married Sunday school class, we had 120 people that attended that class. Mm -hmm. And um, we had, uh, we were basically his elders for that class. <laughs> we were his deacons, you know? And one guy was in charge of, of music, worship, Another one was in charge of missions. We supported a missionary from our class, uh, two missionaries. And then uh, another one was in charge of outreach. And we planned outreach events, you know, to, to invite our friends and so on. And we had different responsibilities. And, and I was in charge of announcements. And I would give announcements on Sundays and that sort of thing in our Sunday school class. And it was like a mini church. I learned to be a pastor in that Sunday school class. He discipled me. But you know when we met each week? 5.30 a.m. every Thursday morning. Mm. I said, oh, Pastor, 5.30 in the morning? He said, well, if you want to be part of this, that's when we meet. <laughs> and you know what I did ever since then? Well, now I'm not because I'm not pastoring right now. But as long as I pastored, 5.30 every Thursday morning, I had a discipleship meeting. Mm. One morning I got up real early. And I'm like, oh, man, I had to shower, you know, and I went and the shower was cold. I had to go outside and start the, start the pump and the... And the they were and getting there. I showered up, man. I, I raced to church. You know how I got there? And usually one guy got there just a little bit earlier. I mm -hmm. made the coffee. And went, he hasn't made the coffee. Oh, man. I guess I have to make coffee. He's not coming today. So I made the coffee and I go to my office. I'm waiting around. I'm waiting around. I'm waiting around. I look at my watch. It's 3 30. Oh, 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 to build disciples. It's hard work. It's not easy, but we need to be willing to do it. And then, what else does it take? Relationships. Just building relationships. And I guess this is where, where I, I would say just be friends with people. Then invite them into the life of your home and of your church. You know, Spend time together. I was uh, adding on in a of a, an office on the back of my home. <clears throat> and I led a young guy to the Lord. I said, hey, um, you know, I'm, I'm adding on the my house, and we were talking about this during one of our discipleship meetings. And I said, yeah, next week I'm, I'm pouring the stem wall, pouring the concrete to do the foundation. He said, oh, well, hey, let me help you. I said, really? You can help me? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. So he comes over. It's 104 that day. Ooh. Fahrenheit, right? 104. And we're taking cement, mixing it by hand. And taking them down along the side of the house and scraping our knuckles on the stucco on the side of the house, you know, yeah. and pouring the cement. He worked all day sweating. You know, we had lunch together. We prayed together. We had we were memorizing scriptures. We did it. At the end of the day, you know what he did? He said, boy, Pastor, thanks so much for letting me come and help you today. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, no. Man, that was so cool. He talked about that for the whole year. Just remind, remind me. Man, that was a great day, wasn't it? Hmm. What was that about? Just invite them into my life. That's all. Just spend time together. Love people. And uh, build relationships. That's the best disciple we can possibly be. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we would do is now we would look at uh, preparation for Unit 7. And we've already had Unit 7, so we don't have to do that. Yeah. All right. Hey, how about that? So we're, we're done. Good time. Okay, 11.13. <laughs> what we're going to do is you can take a stand-up break and so on.